It's been a while since we've covered a truly independent project here on Cinema Nippon, and even longer since we had the privilege of contacting a filmmaker to help us in making an episode. We thought it was high time to cover something in this regard once again, so we set about looking for an appropriate topic to examine in depth. Combing through some independent projects, we came upon something that had been sitting in our Watch Later list all along over on Amazon Prime. This project is the 2017 documentary Itako Visions, a medium-length film which seeks to investigate the dying phenomenon of Itako, or female shamans who are typically hard of sight, indigenous to Japan. After coming across the film once again, we reached out to Edmondo Peroni, the filmmaker, and Mariana Zanita, the anthropologist, as they're known according to the film's Kickstarter page. The duo were gracious enough to offer us an interview about the trials and tribulations, as well as the learning experiences that arose from the creation of Itako Visions. We want to give a big thanks to Peroni and Zanita for helping so much with this episode, for exposing us to the idea of Itako, and for the film which they have crafted together. Itako are a fairly obscure phenomenon outside of Japan, given how much suppression this obscure group of women has faced over the centuries. Our first question for Perone and Zanetta was what inspired the two to look into these women and their stories. As it turns out, Itako Visions began as a PhD thesis film for Mariana Zanetta, who, at the time, was working on a doctorate in Paris. Here, her program had concentrations in anthropology and religions, and Far Eastern studies. Zanetta chose to partner with Eddie on the project, where he would serve as the director, camera operator, and editor, among other roles. In the process, Eddie explained to us that he made Itako Visions, quote, less academic than what could have been, but it started absolutely for her research, end quote. As it turns out, it was through Mariana Zanita's scholarly studies that the two came across the idea of Itako, which in turn led to the film. Undertaking anthropological studies, especially related to Japanese religion, she studied Japanese shamanism, which led to a fascination in these blind women connecting the world of the living and the world of the dead. They sought to explore the Itako ceremonies and impacts on the Japanese community, how they interact with those who make use of their channeling powers. What's more, Peroni and Zanita wished to look at the impure nature of these women, as they are believed to be by some. As Eddie put it in our email exchange, quote, That's why we were there, where the Itako live and work. Maybe it's better to ask why the Itako. In Japan, there are so many different kinds of shamanism, and all of the themes are peculiar of a specific region, and with specific names and roles. We chose to know the Itako, for their characteristics. In a word, kigare, the impurity of being female, blind, and a shaman." End quote. All of this might have seemed familiar, at least relatively speaking, to Zanetta, but for Eddie, he went on to explain that this was all new territory for him. The filmmaking process was thus somewhat transformative for him. As he continued, quote, I simply don't know anything about Japan. I was very fascinated about this country, but except, of course, for my childhood cartoons, I didn't know so much about their culture, festivals, religion, and language. So, for me, it was like an ancient expedition. That's also one of the reasons I left the Kuchiyose part without subtitles. To give the audience the same feeling of mystery and unintelligibility I experienced while shooting. After this travel, I can simply suggest a trip to Japan to anyone I meet. It is a country that's worth a visit because of its peculiarity, magic, contradictions, faith, technology, passions, and so on. What's more, Peroni and Zanita wished to look at the impure nature of these women. Itako Visions was shot over the course of several years, during which Mariana Zanita was seeking her PhD. This is seen in the finished film in how it jumps through time, given that an almost two-year gap existed between shooting expeditions. We asked Eddie about this gap, which he explained was the result of making the film on borderline no budget. Without any investors, the duo stated on their Kickstarter page that the bills were all footed by their savings. In fact, by the time they sought crowdfunding, it wasn't for additional photography or advertising, but rather to help subsidize distribution. The film was shot largely between two trips to Japan, the first for 10 days in 2012 and the second for five weeks in 2014. Eddie contextualized this for us, explaining, quote, The first time we simply tried to understand, the context, the Itako, their possible future, the clients, the venues, the questions to ask, just observing what was happening to us. The second time, we went there with a sort of production plan, 
several pre-planned interviews, the places to visit and shoot, and some free time for unexpected events or meetings. The post-production took a lot of time in order to edit, create storytelling, add the voiceover, and arrange all the meeting and section links. And definitely, once you plan the premiere, it always means you have to finish it on time." End quote. Further exemplifying how personal this project was, Eddie delved a bit into what it was like working with such a small crew. He continued, quote, Of course, the importance of a crew, for example. I was alone sometimes as a cameraman, interviewer, audio tech, and I can assure you that's not easy at all managing all these tech parts while trying to understand people and the context. Moreover, Japanese people are the most kind in the world, and even if they seem so discreet, they were very happy to share their feelings and emotions with me. So don't be shy, speak with them, even if you don't know a word of their language. They make themselves understood. But always be considerate and don't be too pushy. Be organized, have a plan, and when possible, write the chapters of your film before reaching your destination country. But be ready and react to the unexpected. It will give you the best part of your doc." End quote. The tradition of Itako supposedly goes back as far as prehistoric times, with indigenous shamanism prior even to Shinto. This was at a time when some villages were ruled over by magical female leaders, the very shamans about whom we're discussing. In quiet, remote villages, in spite of the rise of both Shinto and Buddhism, Itako continued on their traditions for centuries on end. During the Edo period, blindness came to have a new significance as both spiritual and magical. Certain occupations had by then become the new gold standards for the blind, most specifically masseurs and Itako. However, in spite of these important roles, Itako were also seen as something of untouchables, being relegated to the same lowly status as butchers, morticians, and other similarly unclean occupations. Later, during the Meiji Restoration, a time when Japanese traditions like tattooing were outlawed thanks to self-consciousness on the part of the government, Itako became illegal along with other shamanistic practices. A lot of these practices were restricted to avoid embarrassment with the international community. The new Meiji institution sought to integrate with the modern world, and seemed to think that displaying anything which may be considered odd or improper would harm their chances of becoming a superpower on the world stage. Itako, as a result, became one of the victims caught in the crossfire. Eddie explained to us that Itako are so far removed from Euro-American divination and channeling due to the fundamentally different jumping off points. When we asked him about comparing Itako with Western or European magical traditions, Eddie stated, quote, Absolutely not. The main issue is the different religious background and the different way in which Japanese interpret religion itself. I think it's not possible to put on the same level the practitioners of Japanese folk religions with phenomena of spirit possession in Europe or the US. End quote. Itako are thought by those who believe in their powers to communicate with the dead, or, in some cases, with kami, the spiritual beings that inhabit the animistic Shinto worldview. They communicate between the living and the dead, and are also responsible for praying for goodwill from the gods. Those visiting an Itako may be seeking to speak with their unborn children, or their ancestors, or to petition the gods for a good harvest. Regardless of the reason for a visit, everything the Itako does to assist their client is very formal and ritualized. Sadly, by the last count, taken in 2009, fewer than 20 Itako supposedly exist, with most, if not all, living on Mount Osore in Aomori Prefecture. Eddie explored with us how the Japanese public reacts to Itako as varying significantly depending on religion, age, and knowledge. This is similar to how many English speakers may feel regarding their country's own indigenous shamanism and magic at large. Quote, I was in Wakayama Prefecture, so 1,000 kilometers away from Ozore-san, and asked people about Itako. They answered me, laughing while stating, making the typical rosary gesture by rubbing hands. So in my experience, they know them, but seem skeptical about their power. That's, of course, not the opinion of whom, like Yoko and her husband, that left Chiba Prefecture, more than 600 kilometers away, to reach the Taisai to just have a Kuchiyose and pray for their lost children. End quote. Remarkably, Itako largely don't charge for their services and live off donations. 
In 2014, Eddie states it was expected that one would pay about $40 per session. As a result of this and their dwindling numbers, Itako are beginning to disappear, making this film all the more important from an anthropological perspective. Though the Itako may be a dying phenomenon in Japan, they serve an important function for certain Japanese citizens. Times of strife or disaster, like the earthquake and tsunami of March 11, 2011, as seen in the film, can cause a spike in spiritualism and interest in communicating with the dead. These spikes can be managed by the presence of Itako, which is exactly what we see in Itako visions, specifically with a young couple who visit an Itako specifically to cope with a failed pregnancy. We visit this particular couple twice, once while visiting an Itako in 2012, and again via an internet video call several years later. We were curious what happened with the two, about which Eddie thankfully filled us in. Asked about what happened in between, Eddie stated, quote, The magic. Yoko got pregnant a few months after the meeting with the Itako in Ozoresan, and had a baby finally. In a couple of years, they had another one. We were in contact with her on Facebook, and we wanted to tell her story development directly in the documentary. My aim was to underline the Itako role, despite if the audience had faith or not in their work. Keep in mind that here, faith is a completely different topic than in Western countries." End quote. For those interested in examining Itako Visions further, the film is available in two places right now, for free with an Amazon Prime subscription and for purchase on Vimeo. This is an important piece of film for those interested in non-mainstream spiritualism. It covers a field of shamanism and the metaphysical in Japan that honestly doesn't get much press outside of its home country. This is a fascinating look into Itako, an obscure but important phenomenon for understanding the Japanese spiritual canon, given how sidelined Itako had been compared with other types of magic we've covered here on the channel up to this point. We would like to give a huge thanks to Eddie Peroni and Mariana Zanetta for providing answers to our questions in this video, as well as for creating this fascinating piece of documentary film. Be sure to show your support by going and checking out Itako Visions wherever it's available to you, and let us know in the comments below what you think of this project.